This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now, back in 1989, when I was all of 22 years old, I listened to a very special edition of what was a venerable British institution back then, the Friday Rock Show on the BBC, hosted by the late, great Tommy Vance. And the reason it was a special um, edition of the show was because uh, it was all dedicated to one artist, a certain Mr. Gary Moore. And he was in the studio along with Cozy Powell and they were being interviewed as a way of uh, publicising Gary's new album, what was the new album at the time, After the War. And uh, great, uh, a great, great episode of uh, the Friday Rock Show and I had it on cassette. I, uh, there was a real art to that in those days, wasn't there? Recording on a two-hour show off the radio and knowing when to hit pause so you could uh, get rid of the, the trailers and the weather and the news bulletins so you could fit the whole two-hour show onto a 90-minute uh, a um, cassette. Anyway, I digress. Um, during the interview, Gary was asked uh, who his favourite guitarists were and he came up with all of the usual suspects Eric Clapton and Jimi Hendrix and you know all of the names that you would um, expect to hear uh, coming from the uh, from Gary's background um, but he did mention one player who was at the time his current favourite guitar player and it's the guy who played this solo So in case you don't recognise it, which there's a fair chance you won't, that is um, a solo from a song called River of No Return by the late, great Jeff Healy, the famous Canadian blind guitarist. He used to play his guitar kind of flat on his lap like that. I went to one of his shows, actually, at the uh, at Newcastle City Hall, and it was absolutely breathtaking. But yeah, Gary, um, in 1989 at least, was saying that Jeff was his favourite guitar player. So that's hence the title of this video. So now you've heard the solo, let's have a little bit of a look at what's going on in the solo. Solo explanation. Okay, as usual, we'll begin by looking at the chord sequence we're playing over here. Overall, this song is in the key of either B major or G sharp minor, the relative minor. And the solo begins on the four chord in the key of B, which is an E chord. And the other chords we've got are basically B, there's a C sharp minor in there, um, get an F sharp in there, five chord, and then there's like a, a, a secondary dominant chord, a couple of secondary dominant chords, A sharp seven and D sharp seven. And it all goes together to sound like this. And after that chord there, you're really expecting it to go back to the G sharp minor. That uh, D sharp seven is the five of G sharp minor. But it doesn't. Um, in the same way as we come in on the four chord of the major key, which is the major key is B and the four chord of that is E, uh, the relative minor key is G sharp minor. That D sharp seven sets up that D sharp minor tonality perfectly and then it doesn't go there it goes to c sharp minor when the, uh, the the rest of the song comes in so you're getting that final sort of few bars of uh, the a sharp seven going to the d sharp seven and then to c sharp minor like this so it 
just takes it in a different direction than perhaps you were expecting. So, what are we playing over this then? Well, by and large, we're using the G sharp minor or B major pentatonic. Um, that said, an honourable mention needs to go to the uh, the E note, which is um, you know there because we've got an E chord. That's not in the B major in the B major pentatonic. Uh, B major pentatonic is B, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. So we can add the E note in there because the E chord is giving us that note. Uh, there is one other note that we'll um, talk about as we get towards the end of the solo. But for now, let's take a look at the first few licks. We start in this position it actually starts on the E node uh, and we're basically focusing on that E note there in the G sharp because those are two notes the root and the third that are in the um, in the underlying E chord then we uh, change chords to the B chord uh, for this uh, bend from C sharp up to D sharp targeting the major third of the B chord Like that, just a straight up kind of little uh, run out of that. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of seeing it as part of this pattern here of B major pentatonic. Uh, then uh, we go up to uh, this bend here, this F sharp to G sharp bend. Uh, what we got? Again, just kind of uh, playing around in this pattern here, but you can see that the E note is cropping up again uh, here like this. Um, and then just a straight up uh, little uh, pentatonic thing. Like that, basically, just coming down, I guess, into um, that pattern there. So you can kind of see that as coming out of there. A little bit of that pentatonic pattern and as I said uh, this one that we've already looked at like that so just a little run that connects the two of them uh, that goes like this uh, and then we have um, again like a little octave kind of thing here almost a bit sort of Wes Montgomery or George Benson like that, nice little run there. And that takes us to basically the um, the second half of the solo where we're hitting the E chord again. Uh, and then we have... Uh, which you can kind of see that as... Um, again, just a B major pentatonic. And then back up to you. Oh, no, not that one. Big three semitone bend there. So we do this. Uh, C sharp to D sharp bend again. Then up to that G sharp there. We're going to bend that all the way up to this uh, B note here and back down again. So do that slowly. And then... So uh, let's do that whole run again there. Uh, so again. Like that. you got to dance around a little bit to get your fingers in the right place there. But, um, you know, learn the lick and then try a few different permutations of which finger needs to be where in the lick to, uh, to end up where you need to end up for the next bit, if you see what I mean. But it's basically just B major pentatonic. Uh, then we're hitting the C sharp minor chord next, and uh, we kind of go into what you can kind of think of. It's it it feels obvious to think in terms of that. There is it's you can make the case that it's coming out of the the B major pentatonic, but it it just feels right to think of it really in terms of. C sharp minor pentatonic because that's the chord we're playing over so
that lick there. And then I said there's another note coming up um, that I hadn't mentioned yet. This At this point here, we're hitting the A-sharp 7th chord, which has this D natural in it. And we get that D natural just by bending the C-sharp here up a semitone. Uh, and then, of course, the chord that comes after that is the the D sharp 7 so we then just take that same C sharp note that same bend basically and take it up a tone this time so we get targeting the, the D note in this chord and then targeting the, the D sharp in this chord and then just as the vocals come back in, we hit this C-sharp note on the arrival of the C-sharp minor chord. That's basically what's going on in this solo. There's a lot of focusing on strong chord tones here. There's a couple of places where we're bending the C-sharp up to a D-sharp, over the um, giving us this note over the C-sharp minor chord, which gives a beautiful uh, add nine sound. So uh, let's just try and simulate that. There's a C-sharp minor chord. Clean it up a little bit. Let's go to single coil. Where are we? There we go. Yeah, so there's a C sharp minor chord. And if I just tap a D sharp note on that, it gives a beautifully kind of mournful sound. Don't know if you heard that. Let's try that. Like that. I don't know if that came through or not, but you get the idea. It's adding the ninth, and he's doing that with a bend there. Very, very effective. But the rest of the time, he's pretty much uh, kind of hanging on to strong chord tones, and you can tell he's aware of, um, you know, what chord he's playing over and what notes are in it by the fact that he bends up a semitone there to hit the D in this chord, and then takes that same note and bends it up a tone to hit the the D sharp in this chord. Very, very effective solo, and. Um, well, now you know what's going on, go away and have some fun with it. And as always, you'll find a full tab for the solo in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it, that explanation you've just seen there, and a jam track to play along with yourself. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address, link in the description. $3 or £2.50 a month gets you access to all of these goodies that go along with these YouTube videos. A massive, massive thank you to every one of you who support me in that, or any of the other ways, all of which are linked down below in the description. And that is pretty much it for today folks hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful entertaining and informative and if you have please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like as well while you're at it don't forget the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time we drink beer and talk about music and guitars and all manner of great stuff fantastic way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now. Yeah.